Hello. <clears throat> Good evening. How are you? Hi. Hi. I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing well. Doing well. What time is it? All right. Well, we can go ahead and get started. All right. I'll go ahead and uh, put you on mute here. And we'll get started. All right. Oh, Ma Pandora's here. Yay. Hi, Pandora. <laughs> All right. We'll go ahead and get started. Ready? Both small end found eyed word someone same enough began run bit sigh each those almost against everything most think wouldn't mom better play i've own every hard remember three stood live stand second sorry keep finally point gave already actually probably himself big everyone lot guess step hey here light quickly dad kiss black pick else soon shoulder table all right let's move on to a number drill these are just uh dollar numbers okay here we go eight thousand nine hundred eighty eight three hundred forty five dollars ninety eight cents ninety eight dollars eighty nine cents one thousand three hundred fifty four dollars nine hundred seventy two dollars seventy five cents fifty nine dollars sixty one cents thirty six thousand nine hundred thirty seven dollars twenty four thousand five hundred six dollars three dollars sixty five cents nine dollars thirty six cents five hundred thirty five dollars forty two cents one dollar forty seven cents twenty three dollars sixty five cents forty seven thousand six hundred thirty five dollars seven thousand nine hundred thirty four dollars all right now i've got a, a basic brief review drill you're going to hear mr mrs ms miss uh, ever every there possessive there then we have there let's go over there another and before okay here are your sentences they just don't get all their invitations is she presently being called Ms. Rutherford or Mrs. Rutherford? She used to use Miss Clark before she was married. There is another thing to consider before informing the press. Will Mr. and Mrs. Duncan be here beforehand? Ms. Harris will have to check it. Their baggage should be sent by another means. I saw Miss Norris, but not Ms. Rendell and Mrs. Jackson. It seems to happen every time.
there are this many people invited. Ms. Thomas sends her regrets, but hopes she will be able to attend at another time with Miss Linden. She, or excuse me, should we send them another invitation before we hear about whether they received the first one? Miss Harris had moved before. Did you ever invite Mr. and Mrs. Burton before this occasion? I saw that their invitation was lying there on the table. All right. Yeah, some Tangle Tamers. All right, here we go, ready? Persecution complex, school enrollment, bicycling maneuver, foreseeable future, held temporarily, earthquake resistant, nationwide offensive, helicopters hovering, Seriously debilitated. Residential demobilization. Experimental procedure. Billion dollar merger. Antitrust ruling. Mislabeled submissions. Effectiveness questioned. Treatment quarantine. Fiscally responsible, health technician. All right, now I've got some words that end with final effort and along with sentences. Here we go. Favor, fever, lever, sliver, chauffeur, mover, hover, Suffer, over, offer, tougher, sever, driver, never, rougher, river. Here are your sentences. When will the movers be here? You should use a lever. You really should sever all ties. It was cold enough to make us shiver. We got a good offer on the house. They will never uncover the secret. They had a limousine with a chauffeur for prom night. We need to clean up the river. Please do me a favor and go over these figures. He is taking a tougher position. I have a sliver in my thumb. It is safer to do it over and make sure. I never intended to sever the ties. The helicopter seemed to hover over the house. The water was rougher than the driver had expected. <clears throat> All right, now I've got some basic sentences for sentence practice. Here we go, ready? Tell David to whisper the secret to me. I could hear him whispering. There are ice cubes in the refrigerator. Those shoes really hurt my feet. He will rue this day forever. He recognized the need for help. Please shut the door quietly. Can you play, or I'm sorry, can you hunt and fish? He recognized the need for help. It is 40 miles to the beach by Route 20. He went 10 miles to find help. 
that would be a real inconvenience. The line was plumb with the drain. The inflator failed to function. Why don't you buy her a nice house plant? The compression rate was elevated. He held the line on prices for a long time. The dish is made of plastic. The air is very cold today. Four plus two plus three is nine. Let her wear your jacket to the store. He plans to go to school this semester. Let her wear your jacket to the store. Sorry about that, I already said that one. I want a 60 horsepower motor. Try for a quick win at the game. I noted a flaw in the basic design. Enter an order for 24 new compressors. The bike had a short turning ratio. Did you propose the new plan? The magenta color clashed with the red. She sells real estate part time. A carpenter uses a hammer and saw. We have an open account here. The land of the Nile is fertile. Jimmy is going to be a teacher. Use a plane to shave the wood a bit. Put on a good coating of wax. Use the compass to tell where we are. It is a mixture of hydrogen and oxygen. We had trouble with the carburetor. Keep the business on an even keel. Would it be possible to remain for a while? Button the button on your shirt. This water has been treated with chlor chlorine. He sealed the crack with putty. Look at the crack in the plaster. Our town needs a good disposal system. They are seated on the terrace by the pool. <clears throat> All right, let's do some consonant compounds. This focuses on initial consonants SM on the initial side. All right, here we go. She gave him a smack on the head. He called it a small smack. It was a small smack, but it smarted. Smalt is not a smart color. The smart people ate the smelt. Smell the Smithfield ham. Smile, you're on candid camera. He smeared her reputation with a smirch. Smith and Smythe were blacksmiths. They were smitten by her smile. She wore a smock when smoking. The smog was caused by smoke. Smokers make some people smolder. He was known as a smooth smoocher. Smorgasbord means lots of food. They were smashed to smithereens. Smother those who would smite you. There was a smudge on the smuggler. Will you try to smuggle it in? The book was full of smut. All right. How are we doing on time? Good. Okay. Names and addresses. Here we go. Ready? Ms. Melissa M. Peterson. P-E-D-E-R-S-O-N. Route 10, Box 85, Centuria, Wisconsin. 
54824. Yvette R. Bast, B A S T, Route 1, Box 348, Deer, Wisconsin, 54125, Mound Middle School, 3789 North Water Street, Decatur, Illinois, 62526. Lori S. Hetland, H E T L A N D, 100 Wampong Drive, Portsmouth, Rhode Island, 02871. Anthony N. Bach, B O C K, Waynesburg College, Waynesburg, Pennsylvania, 153. Seven zero. Paul Z. Amato, A M A T O, P O Box six twenty eight, Colonial Squad, Albany, New York, one two two three two. Cynthia J. Griffin, G R I F F I N, Route twenty four. Box 26, Juliet, Illinois, 60436, Mark G. Ruddingen, R-U-D-N-I-N-G-E-N, -E Route 15, Box 319B, Brainyard, Minnesota, 56401. Miss Stacy A. Duplin, D U P L I N, Route 40, Box 609, Renald Bridge, Louisiana, 70587. All right. Now, I've got some sentences here um, with different briefs and phrases. So I'm going to give you the briefs first. If you have any questions, let me know, okay? Just type it in and I'll give it to you, okay? In other words, just a minute, just a moment, justification, justify, language, mother-in-law, Participate, participation, plaintiff's exhibit, qualification, qualify, railroad, reasonable doubt, signal, sudden law. So is there, before I give you guys the sentences, do you guys have any questions about those? No? If you do, think of one. One of those, let me know. Okay, so here are your sentences. In other words, he is guilty. Wait just a minute. In just a moment, you will see the proof. Is the right justification on? That does not justify the crime. I want to learn another language. I have no mother-in-law yet. The kids will not participate today. Your participation is requested. This is Plaintiff's Exhibit 9. The qualification test is hard. I want to qualify in two years. We are heading for the railroad. If there is reasonable doubt, he is free. I see the signal ahead. She liked her son-in-law. Mother-in-law of the in-laws. Okay, so mother-in-law, they have it as M long O R N L. I write it as M A U R N L. So all the in-laws is N L. 
we write mother as M-A-U-R, so that's why I write it as M-A-U-R-N-L. Son-in-law, again, they do S-O-I-N-L. I write it as just S-O-N-L. Keep it real easy, son, S-O-N, and then the L. Okay, so you have a choice there. Okay. All right. So let me know if you guys think of anything else there. All right, let's go ahead and uh, tackle some... Uh, literary okay all right so um there's we've got we're going to start out here with the narrative answer okay read this once and then we're going to go into some other literary and i'll read this at 120 since it's our first one all right uh, here we go I hit the ground. Then I went to stand up, but it felt as if somebody had stuck a knife in my back. I wanted to get away from the truck because it looked as if it was going to teeter and perhaps roll over again. It was sitting on its side and it was kind of moving it looked as if it was going to come over on me so i walked away a little bit then i just sat down and that is where i stayed i just sat there looking up at the bed of the truck and waiting to be taken away. It wasn't too long until somebody got there. I was so relieved to see the rescue workers. I just knew that they were going to be able to prevent the truck from turning over on top of me. It was a very scary time for me. All right. I'm going to give you um, a little continuation from Bodie State Historic Park. Okay, we, I'm going to uh, give you where we, you know, just we're going to pick up where we left off. Okay. All right, here we go. McMi McMillan House. A.E. McMillan was secretary of the Bodie's Miners Union in 1885. His son, Dan, who had only one arm, was manager of the Bodie baseball team in the early 1900s. Optional side trip. Just behind the Gregory House to the south, you see the Falk House. Annie C. Falk, wife of Richard Falk, is buried in Bodie Cemetery. She came to Bodie at age 23 from her native Denmark to visit her sister. During the visit, she met and fell in love with Richard. Annie died shortly after giving birth to their third daughter. Miller Boarding House, Minnesota native Annie Curry Miller moved to Bodie in the boom years with her minor husband, William. She first ran the Occidental Hotel, then later opened this boarding house to provide rooms and meals for bachelor minors. She also owned the rooming house across the street. Conway House. Thomas Robert, known as Bob Conway, born in Canada in 1875, lived here with his wife, Annie, and three children. The family first lived in the Todd House across the street. Bob was one of Bodie's last residents in the boom years. Bob's cousins, John and Patrick Conway, 
ran freight wagons between Bodie and Carson City, Nevada. John also worked as a blacksmith. The hops growing on the porch railing were said to be the only green plants that could survive in Bodie. Optional side trip. Across the street from the Conway House is the Todd House. James Todd, a miner, lived here in the 1900s. Uphill at the Fork, the small building is known by the nickname of its last resident, Dog Face George. At the top of the hill is the McKinnis House. Canadian Roderick McKinnis, McKinnis was a miner known for his wrestling talents. He and his wife, Mary, had four children. Dr. Street's house. Dr. John A. Street was a physician for the Treadwell Yukon Mining Company between December 1930 and January 1932. In Bodie's boom years, a number of doctors in private practice were kept busy with victims of mining accidents, smallpox, cholera, and pneumonia. Quinville House. Frank F. Quinville, a Canadian native, moved to Bodie in the 1880s. He was the blacksmith for the Standard Mine and Mill well into the early 1900s. He and his wife Mary had five children. Standard Mill. Because the mill buildings and surrounding areas are unsafe, access to the mill is available only by guided tours in the summer months. This is the standard Consolidated Mining Company's Stamp Mill. The standard was the most successful of 30 mining companies operating in the Bodie Mining District. Heavy iron rods, known as stamps, broke up quartz rock containing gold and silver. Mercury, and later cyanide, was used to separate the metals from the crushed rock. The standard mine, located on the hill above, was first known as the Bunker Hill and the Bullion Mine. A mine collapse in 1875 revealed a rich ore vein and started the rush to Bodie. The mine was renamed the Standard in 1877 and yielded more than $18 million over 38 years. This mill was built in 1899 after an 1898 fire destroyed the original building. In 1893, Superintendent Thomas Leggett brought electricity to power the mill from a hydroelectric plant about 13 miles away. One of the first long distance transmissions of alternating current in the United States. The house to the right with the large porch is named for another standard superintendent. Theodore Hoover, brother of U.S. President, President Hoover, Theodore, his wife Mildred, and their young daughter lived in Bodie from June 1903 to January 1906. He later became executive head of the Department of Mining at his alma mater, Stanford University, in 1919. All right, we'll stop there. Very interesting. That place is so neat. All right, how are we doing on time? Good, we're doing okay. I'm gonna give you just a little bit more literary, one more. Um, we're gonna continue with the page on life aboard, uh, the Nimitz class aircraft carrier. 
Okay, here we go. Nimitz class nuclear powered aircraft carriers are the most sophisticated ships in the world. Floating towns with many of the same conveniences. Aircraft carriers have closed circuit television stations, studios, radio stations, and newspapers. Libraries are stocked with study books, fiction, nonfiction, paperbacks, and current magazines. There are even opportunities to attend accredited colleges and universities while on board. Life aboard aircraft carriers is challenging, but exciting, with many of the same opportunities as submarines for overseas deployments and foreign port visits. Many of your shipmates may be sailors you already know from training. These friends will be by your side, whether you are working diligently to repair a piece of equipment or are out enjoying the festivities in a foreign port. Beyond the Navy, you have met the challenges of Navy life, but now it is time to move back to the civilian world. You have had the best training possible and you have been successful, but what now? Will you be able to find work? Will it pay well? What about the challenge? Will it be there? The answers to most of your questions will be encouraging because of the training you received as a nuclear trained sailor. Mike Watson of Orion International, a consulting firm that recruits people for corporations all across the US, said the most difficult decision most nuclear trained sailors have to make after getting out of the Navy is where they want to live and work. They are only limited by geographic location, Watson said. Nuclear trained sailors, when they separate from the Navy, are truly only limited by geographical preferences. They can go anywhere. The companies we deal with, from manufacturing to high tech, really like employing nuclear trained sailors, he added. It is not so much what they already know, but what they are capable of learning. Companies all over America have been learning that sailors who have been successful in the most challenging jobs available while on active duty remain the best of the best, after leaving the military. They are valued for their leadership skills as well as their experience, according to Watson. Many of the individuals placed by Watson's company have landed jobs paying between $90,000 and $100,000. Managers, he said, were confident placing former sailors because of their professionalism and skill. The outlook, according to Orion International, is good. Many industries are facing a post baby boom shortage of qualified candidates. This demand for qualified candidates is expected to continue, especially in the manufacturing and technical areas, due to a shortage of people with engineering, science, and computer backgrounds. It is an outlook that seems especially bright for people with Navy nuclear training. Whether you complete a career in the Navy or leave after your first tour of duty, your training and experience as a nuclear sailor will continue to open doors to opportunity long after your return to civilian life. As one of the best prepared technicians available, your services will be in high demand in a wide variety of high paying job specialists. 
your future might lie in engineering, maintenance, design, consulting, or as a safety inspector. But no matter what field you choose after leaving the Navy, your skills and abilities will be your ticket to success. As Marty Hare says, the teamwork and dedication that I learned in the Navy to power and propel a nuclear ship at 30 plus knots was the foundation for my civilian career and the teamwork that it takes to keep our nuclear units at 100%. All right, let's move into jury charge. This is on housebreaking. All right, here we go, ready? The defendant is indicted on several counts here to which I have previously made reference. I told you I removed as a matter of law the one which charged armed robbery, the others I have left for your consideration. And by doing so, I do not intimate any opinion as to what you should or should not find with reference to the facts and to your ultimate verdict. I previously told you that the indictment does not constitute evidence in any manner or to any extent, but merely permits the trial to be held. The state must prove the guilt of an accused beyond a reasonable doubt before there may be a conviction as to any particular count in the indictment. The defendant has entered a plea of not guilty. He is presumed to be not guilty, and this presumption carries throughout the entire trial, unless or until it is removed by evidence, satisfying you of guilt beyond a reasonable doubt. This term means what it would imply, not a fanciful, whimsical, or capricious doubt, but a reasonable doubt, sometimes called a substantial doubt. It is a doubt arising out of the testimony and or evidence in the case, or the lack of testimony or evidence in a case, which leaves the mind of a fair and impartial juror in a wavering and unsettled condition. After the juror has fairly and impartially considered all of the testimony and evidence in the case, I further charge you that the fact that a defendant does not testify cannot be held or charged or considered by you against him in any manner or to any extent. I also charge you that where it is undertaken by the state to prove the guilt of an accused by circumstantial evidence, not only must the evidence and circumstances be proven, but they must be holy and must point to a moral certainty to the guilt of the accused. They must be holy and in every particular perfectly confident with each other, and they must further be absolutely inconsistent with any other reasonable hypothesis than the guilt of the accused. One charge in the indictment, which is for your consideration, is a charge of housebreaking, which is set forth in section 16 dash 332 of our code of laws as it then existed it is now in another section under a newer code but the statute is identical it says every person who shall break and enter or who shall break 
with intent to enter in the daytime any dwelling or house or who shall break and enter or shall break with intent to enter in the nighttime any house the breaking or entering of which would not constitute burglary with intent to commit a felony or other crime of lesser grade shall be guilty of a felony. Now there are several elements which must be established by the requisite of burden of proof. There must be a breaking, there must be an entering, and both must be accompanied with an intent to commit some crime once the breaking and entering has been accomplished by breaking. A breaking may occur by merely opening a closed door or a door that is partially open but not sufficiently to permit entry and it requires a further opening in order to enter. There must be an entering which means a going into and both as I say must be accompanied with an intent to commit a crime once the breaking and entering has occurred by intent. We mean an aim, purpose, or a goal. Larceny is the taking and carrying away of the goods or the things personal of another. Personal property as distinguished from real estate. It may even be money. All right. Let's go ahead and get started with some Q&A. And we will do read back, okay? All right, but we'll go ahead and warm up. All right, so this is going to be, let's see, we're gonna start out with plaintiff, okay? And I'll start at 120, but I'll work my way to 160, okay? All right, here we go. Was there any other sum of money paid? Yes, I do believe there was. Now, is that on a joint account between the two of you, meaning the petitioner and the respondent? Yes. Who signed this check? Cindy Netter. Now, at this time, was there an agreement that the loan would continue? Or was there any sort of modification or anything? Yes, what we did was we needed the money to get into a new house. It was a brand new house and it needed improvements, needed the typical regular things for a new house. So we asked my mom to extend the terms of the, either modify the contract or extend the terms as to the $120,000. So we paid the interest payments and she agreed on the same terms of three years, 5% from the time the house closed escrow. When did the house close escrow? September 1, 2008. So three years from now, it was, it's already due, right? Do you consider this a valid community debt? Yes, I do. Did your mother ever tell you that you didn't have to pay her back? Never. No further questions on this issue, Your Honor. Cross-examination. Thank you. Mr. Netter, in regard to exhibit number 15, this check, isn't it true that this check to your sister was to repay a recent loan from her to you and Cindy to pay off some debts at home? That was paid in 2008. That was not for anything recent. Recent meaning at the time of this check? No. At the time of this check, hadn't you in fact borrowed some money from your sister and wasn't this a check paid to her in repayment for that? We never borrowed any funds from my sister. 
She never lent the community any money. Mr. Netter, in regard to exhibit number 16, yes, which is, I'm sorry. This is the letter, the alleged letter from you to Diane. You were provided with a copy of requests for production of documents. Do you recall completing the response to that request for production? Yes, I do. And weren't you requested to bring or to provide to me copies of all documents that refer to this particular loan? Well, first of all, your request was defective and there was objection stated. And I don't recall exactly without reviewing the objections or reviewing the exact items that you state there. I don't know if that was what you asked for. Why was this document not provided to us in response to the production request, Mr. Netter? I don't know if you asked for it. Did you have a copy of this letter in about July of 2011? No, I did not. When did you first obtain a copy of this letter? It was in the beginning of September when my sister first sent it to me of this year. In regard to this alleged loan, Mr. Netter, is there any written agreement with your mother or with your father regarding the characterization of this amount of money as a loan? On the checks, it's written loan. Is there any other written documentation that would establish that this was in fact a loan? No, there is not. Are there any documents that would establish the terms of and conditions of payment? You mean with exception to the letter that's there? I'm talking about any written document signed by your mother or your father that established the terms or signed by you and your wife that established the terms of the payback of this alleged loan. No, I don't believe there is. And Mr. Netter, aren't, don't you have any juris, don't you have a degree currently in, yes, I do, law? Are you practicing as a law clerk currently for a law firm in the Los Angeles? Yes, I am. Objection, Your Honor. Relevancy at this point on this issue. Overruled. Now, Mr. Netter, why is it that you did not insist on having some kind of a written document from your parents in regard to this loan if it was a loan? It was family. It was based on a handshake. It was fine. I have no further questions of this witness, Your Honor. Mr. Anderson, no questions, Your Honor. Please step down, sir. Thank you. Any further evidence, Mr. Anderson? No, Your Honor. Ms. Hendrickson, except that the exhibits that we marked for identification be admitted into evidence. The exhibits, we have no objection, Your Honor. Exhibits in evidence. Ms. Hendrickson, yes, Your Honor. Respondent calls Candy Robertson. Candy Robertson, raise your right hand and face the court. You do solemnly swear the testimony you shall give in the matter now pending before this court will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. I do. Please be seated. Please state your first and last name for the record. Candy L. Robertson. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning. Candy, what is your occupation? I'm a government underwriter. I underwrite loans for FHA and VA loans. And where are you currently employed? Director's Mortgage. And where were you employed before you went to work for Director's Mortgage? Cameron Brown, and they're now First Union Mortgage. And is that company also or was that company at the time you were employed doing underwriting for loans on real property? Yes, same business. And how long have you been in this particular line of business that you're in? 
since 1999? And do you have any spe special certificates or qualifications for your position? Yes, you have to go through particular training to become a direct endorsement underwriter and it's authorizing. FHA authorizes you to underwrite government loans and you have authority to sign and make a credit decision on the package. You go through three days worth of training and you're issued a certificate and you're considered a direct endorsement underwriter. You also have to have your lending license. Okay, so you currently hold such a license and certificate? Yes. How long have you held that certificate? Since 19, excuse me, 2006. And are you requested in your job to apply to the Department of, I'm sorry, the FHA standards in view of certain loan applications? Yes, we have guidelines and I brought copies of those guidelines. Were you employed at Cameron Brown at the time that Cindy and Steve Netter purchased a home? Yes, I was. And were you the underwriter on that particular purchase? Yes, I was. And you prepared all of the documents, is that correct, for the purchase of that home? Actually, I presented them with an application and they completed their application. I know occasionally I would help them with the paperwork because it does get intense. And at that time, they returned the paperwork to me. My position when I was at Cameron Brown was office supervisor also. And at that point, as a supervisor of the office, we are qualified to pre-qualify borrowers, process loans, and in turn then, I would underwrite the loan. Okay, do you recall the transaction with Mr. and Mrs. Netter? Portions of it, yes. Was there a down payment that you recall that was made on this particular house? Yes, there was. There was a minimum of 3% down payment required on all FHA loans. It has not changed through the years. Okay, so I'm gonna stop there and read you some, um, give you some read back. Okay. All right. Let's see here. All right, so this is going to be a one page. I'm going to read this once at 120, again at 140, again at 160. Okay, and you can read back whatever one you want. So you're going to hear um, subscribers, estimated, incapable imprinted activity client um let's see at all times talts signals trouble and uh let's see that they uh, monitored at this time dots and dashes imprinted let me just date this. I know we covered it. All right. First time we'll be at 120. This is plaintiff. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. Ready? Were the dots and dashes being imprinted on the tape at this time? Right on the tape. They could refer back to the tape and it would tell you the whole story right there. How many tapes were there on the board that you monitored? I just take a rough guess, really. Was there one tape for each client on that board? No, it just ran continuously. One tape would cover everything. Was there only one tape coming out of that one board that you monitored? Right, and that would cover all these subscribers on that board? Right, do I recall that you estimated that there were approximately 50 subscribers that were on that board? It depends on what board they put you on. Some boards had more, some boards had less. Was there anything else that you had to watch 
on that board besides the tape. I had enough trouble with that one. I couldn't take care of anything else. Did the tape run at various speeds depending upon how much activity there was? It all sounded the same, just running right through. There had to be a tape coming from that board at all times, or the board would be incapable of sending signals. Yes. Okay, let's do it again at 140. Here we go. Were the dots and dashes being imprinted on the tape at this time? Right on the tape. They could refer back to the tape and it would tell you the whole story right there. How many tapes were there on the board that you monitored? I'd just take a rough guess, really. Was there one tape for each client on that board? No, it just ran continuously. One tape would cover everything. Was there only one tape coming out of that one board that you monitored? Right, and that would cover all the subscribers on that board? Right. Do I recall that you estimated that there were approximately 50 subscribers that were on that board? It depends on what board they put you on. Some boards had more, some boards had less. Was there anything else that you had to watch on that board besides the tape? I had enough trouble with that one. I couldn't take care of anything else. Did the tape run at various speeds, depending upon how much activity there was? It all sounded the same, just running right through. There had to be a tape coming from that board at all times, or the board would be incapable of sending signals? Yes. All right, last time at 160. Here we go. Were the dots and dashes being imprinted on the tape at this time? Right on the tape. They could refer back to the tape and it would tell you the whole story right there. How many tapes were there on the board that you monitored? I just take a rough guess, really. Was there one tape for each client on that board? No, it just ran continuously. One tape would cover everything. Was there only one tape coming out of that one board that you monitored? Right. And that would cover all the subscribers on that board? Right. Do I recall that you estimated that there were approximately 50 subscribers that were on that board? It depends on what board they put you on. Some boards had more, some boards had less. Was there anything else that you had to watch on that board besides the tape? I had enough trouble with that one. I couldn't take care of anything else. Did the tape run at various speeds, depending upon how much activity there was? It all sounded the same, just running right through. There had to be a tape coming from that board at all times, or the board would be incapable of sending signals? Yes. All right. How'd you do? Good. Good. Very good. All right. Well, let's go over this. And if you want, we can each take a Q and an A. And you can choose whatever one you want to read back. Now, continuously, do you just do initial T, final S, and then come back for either L, A, E, or L, long E? That's, uh, well, I actually, I couldn't remember what it was, so I actually did my continue and added an S and then came back for the L, A, E. So I did T, N, S, because continue, I like, I thought of it as continuously, yeah. but and I guess you could do T, initial T, final at, final N, come back for Y, U, S, for yes, and then Lee, but 
I, I usually just do come back for L long E or L A E because you know, we know it's going to be continue. Well, I guess you have to be careful for continually. Yeah. Lee. Okay. Continually. Yeah. That. Yeah. I guess continually would be L A E or L long E. So yeah, I guess you have to have your yes or like you did do your S so you know it's yes. And then Lee. Yeah. I just kind of that one on the fly though. Mm -hmm. Um, but that's pretty good. Uh, I like that T N S for the yes, the S for the yes. And then Lee, I like that. I'm going to write that down. I, I like that a lot. And then L. cause I don't, I don't write well. I mean, even if you wrote continues that way, continuously, I mean, you could define continuously as continuously if you yeah. wanted. Yeah, exactly. But, oh, well, no, because continuous can come up. Never mind. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was a continuous problem or, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyways. Yeah, I know. It's one of those. I guess if you just come back for Y-U-S for yes and then Lee, continue, yes, Lee. Use your brief for continue. I know that's a tricky one. I saw that. I went, oh. I should have given that in the word list. So, all right. Well, do you want to do the first Q and A, or do you want me to start it? Um, let me find my. I missed okay. my spot because I was looking for that. Um, no it doesn't matter. I'll start. Okay. Okay. So, question: Were the dots and dashes being imprinted on the tape at this time? Answer: Right on the tape they could refer back to the tape and it would tell you the whole story right there. Nice. Question, how many tapes were there on the board that you monitored? Answer, I'd just take a rough guess, really. Question, was there one tape for each client on that board? Answer, no, it just ran continuously. One tape would cover everything. Question, was there only one tape coming out of that one board that you monitored? Answer, right. Question, and that would cover all these, all these subscribers on that board? Answer, right. Good, all the, is that what you have, all the? No, I had these, but I had a feeling you said the. Okay, that's okay. And I write all that as a um, phrase, A-U-L-T. And then if alt comes up, I just do A-L-T. Okay, uh, let's see. Question, do I recall that you estimated that there were approximately 50 subscribers that were on that board? Answer, it depends on what board they put you on, period. Some boards had more. Some boards had less. Question, was there anything else that you had to watch on that board besides the tape? Answer, I had enough trouble with that one. I couldn't take care of anything else. Awesome. Question, did the tape run at various speeds depending upon how much activity there was? Answer, it all sounded the same, period. Just running right through. Question, there had to be a tape uh, There had to be a tape coming from that board at all times or the board would be incapable of sending signals. Answer, yes. Awesome. Awesome job. Great job. I like doing this readback. Me too. Yeah. I like it a lot. Glad you brought it up. It's good. And it doesn't take very much time, you know. Even if we go over a little bit, I'd rather go over a little so we can get read back in, you know. So Yeah. Thank you for doing yeah. it. You're welcome. Absolutely. Well, um, can you attend tomorrow at well my time 10 o'clock right no wait 
Yeah. Oh, that's right. Cause you're in Tennessee. Um, yeah. So it's nine o'clock Pacific time. So what is that for you? 11 or 12? Are you, are you, oh, that is, that is 11. I'm central. Okay. You're central. Here. Okay. So, yeah. So, so our nine o'clock time, is that you're 11? So that's 11. Okay. I wrote it down. I have a little. Oh yeah. Nice. I wrote it down wrong. I wrote it that it starts at 10, but it starts at 11. So you, every, every other Wednesday I volunteer at that time. So I can't, but tomorrow I don't. So, oh, um, I can, and then I, I will be at the 180 class in the evening too. Good. So. Perfect. Yeah. Awesome. Yep. So let's I'll see, it's six here. So it's eight o'clock there. Yeah. Okay. All right. And it's, the ground is covered in snow. Oh, nice. <laughs> we had a snow day today. So. You did? Oh, yeah. that's so nice. I bet the kids love that. Yeah, we don't have any, but um, the kids in the neighborhood were all out on their sleds on the street and everything. Oh, so. that's so yeah. much fun. Yeah. I was going to tell you the other day, I love your painting in the background. Oh, thank you. Did you paint that? I did. Oh, wow. That's impressive. I'm really into Bob Ross. <laughs> Do you know oh, Bob Ross? My girlfriend is into him. Yes. My girlfriend like is. a winter scene. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. Thank that's you. Incredible. So have you ever gone to those paint parties? Um, I love I, that. I'll put that up back later. Um, I've been to like, not a home party, but I've been to the ones that like, you actually go and it's yeah. like, you can, bring, you can bring your wine if you want or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've done that. Yep. Do they really take, because I'm so not artsy at all, like I'm a stick per, like I would draw a stick person, but do they kind of take you step by step so it really looks like something when you're done? If you're not, this is if you're not crafty or artsy. Yeah, they're like all levels. The ones I've gone to, everyone ends up with something that looks cool and it's cool to see how everyone interprets the same painting. So that's yeah. kind of fun. But um you should do it. It's I, I want to do it. Super fun just to go with friends or even like girls in, in your yeah. family and I want to do hang out. So yeah. I my um fam the girls in my family like right before I got married they took me for like kind of a girls night out not bachelorette but girls night out yeah and um so it was kind of fun. I have a memory from that that I have on my wall now too. That's so really it's cool. Fun. What yeah. a neat idea. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, we have this place called Painted Earth. I'm not sure if you've heard of that, but they have mm -hmm. those paint parties all the time. And I want to, I want to do one even, you know, just to see how it turns out. If I do, I'll let you know. Yeah, you should. It's so fun. It's cool because like the ones out here, you can go on their website and look at their calendar and you can see like, you can pick what you want to do ahead of time. You can see all the paintings. So you can kind of pick one that would mean yeah. something to you or that you would yeah. like to have on your wall, you know? So that's awesome. Uh, but yeah, it's fun. That's I love great. to paint. I'm oh, yeah. really into it. So it's awesome. Yeah. It could be so therapeutic too, you know, just uh, relaxing and it is, you just, you let your mind go and you just, mm -hmm. you're focused, you're like focused, but then you're kind of not focused at the same time. You're you can kind of let your mind wander on yeah. things, but I like that with reading. I feel like I get lost in a book and that's kind of my like downtime, you know? Yeah. So. Yeah. It's so important to have something. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. When I was a kid, I loved those latch key. Remember latch key hook? Yes. I yes. Those. And I, I want to do something that's like that, but they like, I don't even think they make those anymore. So. They, they totally do at the craft store. I've seen them. They have the kits you can get. Really? <laughs> I live at the craft store. Are you kidding me? I'm, I crochet too. So I'm like, and yarn it, is like my thing and painting. So awesome. but yeah, no, they do have those and they have all sorts of stuff you can do these days. It's just crazy. Yeah. So. I, I would love to learn how to crochet or knit, yeah. you know, but it looks so hard. Oh, I need hey, to take class. If you, if you can, become a court reporter. You can do anything. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I, I think if somebody just showed me step by step, like I can get on Pinterest and I can make things as long as I have like a visual, but um, I should just go take a class because now that my son's going to have a baby, I would love to make like little hats and cute little, you know, just little things that little socks or a blanket or. Yeah, little. you could totally like a little hat. Like that's, that's not, you know, too advanced. You know, once you learn the basics, yeah. you could totally make a hat. That would be super cute. You should try it. I should. Somebody told me they even have like little, um, kind of like grids where you can, you take the yarn and you go in and out and then it kind of teaches you how to do it. And then before you know it, you've got whatever you're making is, you know, is huh. like kind of, it's kind of like training wheels I heard. So I thought, well, maybe I'll do that. Try it. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Nowadays you can even just go on YouTube. There's probably like a full tutorial on how to start crocheting on YouTube, you know? Yeah. And then they have books too that you can get the beginner and the illustration I've seen them. The illustrations are pretty good, you know, but if you watch someone do it like on YouTube, I think that would be helpful. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways. All right. Well, it's nice talking to you, Catherine. You too. Have a good rest of your evening. Okay. You too. Awesome. I've got roller derby practice tonight, so I'm off yeah. to practice. Have fun. <laughs> okay. I will. Yep. And All I'll right. Hopefully I'll see you tomorrow morning. Okay. See you then. Okay. Bye. All right. Bye. Bye.